Who is responsible for Taiwan's defense? Part 21. ROC Taiwan Sovereignty Determination. Preliminary Summary of Investigative Findings. Section 1. The first 20 films in this series presented numerous important perspectives. After detailed review and analysis, it appears that the commonly held view that the Republic of China is responsible for Taiwan's defense is in need of serious re-evaluation. The following major problems are evident, even though they merely represent the tip of the iceberg. Problem 1. Some Chinese scholars like to assert that the effect of the Japanese surrender ceremonies in Taipei was to immediately transfer Taiwan's sovereignty to China. However, such an interpretation is in direct conflict with the 1907 Hague Regulations, which view territory coming under the authority of foreign military forces as the beginning of the military occupation, and which classify the announced annexation of occupied territory as a war crime. After careful investigation, it appears that there is no legal framework where the surrender ceremonies can be interpreted to result in a transfer of territorial sovereignty. Problem 2. Moreover, with no transfer of Taiwan sovereignty to the Republic of China in the post-World War II San Francisco Peace Treaty, the legal basis for the establishment and, or, maintenance of a Republic of China government structure, including Ministry of National Defense and all subsidiary agencies, on Taiwan soil is lacking. This is certainly true from a U.S. perspective, since the SFPT is a Senate-ratified treaty. Problem 3. An examination of the concept of nationality shows that the legal basis for the recognition of Taiwan persons as having ROC citizenship is based on a military order of January 1946. However, under the laws of war, such a mass naturalization order in occupied Taiwan territory is illegal and can be categorized as a war crime. The Article 10 specifications of the Treaty of Taipei do not serve to rectify this problem. Problem 4. Scholars of ROC history and the ROC constitution are typically unable to point to any domestic law, any actions of constitutional significance, or any international treaty, which can confirm the incorporation of Taiwan into the ROC's national territory. All evidence points to the fact that Taiwan has never been legally incorporated into the national territory of the Republic of China, and this fact was even confirmed in a 1959 U.S. court case. Problem 5. In regard to the conscription of Taiwan males to serve in the military, such conscription is based on reaching a certain age and having ROC citizenship. As discussed above, such a citizenship determination does not have a solid legal basis. Moreover, in consideration that United States officials, and the officials of many other countries, firmly maintain that neither Taiwan nor the ROC is an independent sovereign nation, the legal basis for the ROC regime to enforce military conscription policies over the local populace in Taiwan is lacking. The following quotation from the article, Forced Conscription Under International Law, is noteworthy. Conscription refers to compulsory military service. The issue is treated differently depending on whether the conscription is compelled by the government or a non-state actor. Under international law, conscription is viewed as an exercise of a state's sovereignty. For non-state armed actors, forced conscription is always a violation, similar to involuntary servitude or abduction because non-state actors do not have the same privileges as a sovereign state. Problem 6. If the above considerations were not enough, it should also be pointed out that during the mid to late 1940s, the ROC regime's promulgation of a new criminal code, constitution, and legal structure are serious violations of H.R. Article 43. Moreover, with the effect of these legal changes extending into the 1950s, they then constitute violations of GC4, Articles 54, 64, and 65. All such violations can be classified as war crimes. Section 2. The question now arises, can the above six problems be labeled as irrelevant because the Taiwan Relations Act is clear in mandating Taiwan to maintain a sufficient self-defense capability? And, in maintaining their self-defense capability, as authorized under the TRA, is the nomenclature of Taiwan governing authorities in fact already understood to be a synonym for Republic of China? This issue was previously touched upon in part 4 of this series, although rather briefly. To bolster that analysis, we note that in the 1979 Taiwan Relations Act the term Taiwan is defined in terms of geographic scope and people. Regarding geographic scope, Taiwan refers to the islands of Taiwan and the Pescadores. Regarding people, Taiwan refers to the people on those islands, corporations and other entities and associations created or organized under the laws applied on those islands. And the governing authorities on Taiwan recognized by the United States as the Republic of China prior to January 1, 1979. Notably, however, the TRA does not say.
and the governing authorities on Taiwan also known as the Republic of China. Moreover, we stress again the obvious point that if the purpose of the TRA was to highlight the legitimacy of the Republic of China regime in Taiwan, it would have been named the Republic of China Relations Act. But this was not the name chosen. After clarifying these points, a careful review of the TRA again clearly shows that the terminology of Taiwan governing authorities cannot be interpreted as being equivalent to the Republic of China. Section 3 Additional Perspectives In Lin v. United States, U.S. Court of Appeals, D.C. Circuit, 2009, the judges held that America and China's tumultuous relationship over the past 60 years has trapped the inhabitants of Taiwan in political purgatory. During this time the people on Taiwan have lived without any uniformly recognized government. In practical terms, this means they have uncertain status in the world community which infects the population's day-to-day -day lives. The Taiwan entry in the U.S. Department of State publication treaties in force clearly stipulates that the United States does not recognize the Republic of China as a state or a government. Initial Conclusion After viewing the content of the first 20 films, our conclusion must be that the Republic of China does not exercise sovereignty over Taiwan. Moreover, the classification of Taiwan people as Republic of China citizens is incorrect. For these and multiple other reasons, the ROC is not the competent authority to be in charge of the national defense responsibility for Taiwan. Section 4 no doubt many viewers will be displeased with this conclusion. It is only fitting and proper that we give full respect to the collected opinions of these viewers. Therefore, in our following films, we will devote a substantial amount of effort to first presenting Republic of China in Taiwan, Alternative Theories of Sovereignty. We will want to carefully overview the content of each of these alternative theories, whereby it is alleged that Taiwan is a sovereign entity, or the ROC in Taiwan is a sovereign entity, and there exists some theory of how this sovereign status has been achieved. Secondarily, we will consider any theories which claim that the PRC exercises sovereignty over Taiwan, or that Taiwan is somehow part of another sovereign and independent nation state, etc. Alternative theories of sovereignty will comprise the content of films 22 to 85, with a final summary in film 86. Our purpose in presenting all of this information is to clarify what the status quo currently is. We firmly believe that a clarification of the status quo is not a change in the status quo. If indeed our research into alternative theories of sovereignty finds solid proof that the ROC, Taiwan, is a sovereign entity, then we will have completed our mission to determine who is responsible for Taiwan's defense. If not however, we will be forced to take a different path and continue our investigations.